We're back here in Cary, North Carolina, just about to kick off the Men's College Cup Final. Let's get to the lineups. Both remain unchanged. We start with Indiana and Todd Yegley's 4-2-3-1. The center backs are critical in your mind. Yeah, big time here. Because of the rotation you're going to see out of Chris Grassy and Marshall, the amount that they move, Joey Mayer and Daniel Meter are going to have their hands full. And it's the age that I want to focus on. Freshmen and redshirt freshmen that are anchoring this back line. Celentano and goal has to keep communication proper to allow this front three. Gumbali, Thomas War, and the game winner in the semifinal, Endeley, to explode when they get in the final third. They've been great all year. They are second in the nation in goals against average, but can they raise their play today against this Marshall 4-3-3? This might be right here your best goalkeeper in the land. I just talked about Celentano, but Ali Semla on the back line, great with his feet. He'll play high. He'll allow this back line to expand going forward, but it's the presence up top by Milo Yosef. Can he stretch it? More importantly, can he allow his outside middle fielders to get involved? Talked about the winner in the semifinal for Indiana, Jamil Roberts. The same thing off the ball from Vitor Diaz. It's a potent attack that stings in multiple areas. Roberts has game winners in both of their last two matches. Let's get down to Lori Lindsay, former women's national teamer, in front of a sight for sore eyes. Fans! Oh my goodness, guys. This stadium is rocking. And for experienced Indiana Hoosiers, they'll be used to this energy. But for Marshall, they'll look to the sea of green behind me to settle the nerves and give this a home-like feel to this game. Thank you, Lori, and uh, you're absolutely right, folks. We, we watched this one. Congratulations to Santa Clara. The women from Santa Clara won the Women's uh, College Cup Final in penalties 4-1 over Florida State, a game where they came from behind to win that. Uh, and this place was rocking there. This Marshall crew, as we saw it on oh, Friday, yeah. they were there four hours before kickoff geek coming, uh, let's say, properly lubricated in the parking they lot. Left. They, I don't know if they've left. <laughs> it's been an aggressive weekend throughout Raleigh for Mark, for the Thundering Herd fans. Indiana coming strong as well. This is what it's supposed to be about. So happy to be here in person and see fans back in the stands. That was your match winner right there, Herbert Endley, number 17 in their win over Pitt. An individual moment of brilliance was the difference in that game, getting them to this point. Will it be similar tonight? Marshall's never been on this stage, never to the College Cup. They have five total tournament wins all time. Indiana has eight national championships. Will it become nine or will Marshall etch their name in the annals of college sports history? Serene Stoika is the official. Waiting as Stoika wants to clear the water bottle from Ali Semley. Semla, the goalkeeper for Marshall. Oh, he's already in trouble for the water bottle. And he's already, he's giving oh, him a little attitude wow. back too. Here we go. And after a few extra seconds of delay. <laughs> College Cup Final is underway. And this Thundering Herd team loves to possess the ball. Nathan DeSantos plays it back to Ali Semla. We'll he will have the ball at his feet quite a bit as they play out of the back. Paolo Dolabella. Dolabella sprays it out wide. To Gabriel Alves. So, Devin, what are you looking at early in this match? For Marshall and the Thundering Herd, I want to watch the tempo in the midfield and how much they're able to bounce on it because in their semifinal matchup, though they carried a lot of possession down, the midfield too did. And Dolabella and Max Schneider are very active in their success throughout this season. They weren't on the ball a lot though, and that really hindered their ability to get forward into the final third. You can't rely on these long balls up over the top against a quality team like Indiana. For Indiana, they need to stretch this game. Defensively, I'm not worried about them at all outside of the two center backs that I talked about. Mm -hmm. This is a structured squad who can mold themselves to opposition. But once they start to explode going the other way, they need to be a bit better, clinical, if you will, in decision making. Gately knew that. He was that main topic of discussion when we spoke to him about it. So can they explode once they do get the ball and go the other way? And both these teams come in at top five in the nation at goals against average. Semla, who just airmailed that pass. And Roman Celentano, the keeper for Indiana, both have 10 shutouts in the year. There's Todd Yagley, his 11th season at Indiana, 12th coaching overall as a head coach. He is part of a dynasty in college soccer. His father, Jerry Yagley, 30 years as Indiana coach, six national championships. 
and then Todd taking over, winning one in 2012. This is Todd's fourth trip to a College Cup. They lost in 17 and 16. 17, they got themselves to the final, falling to Stanford, one nothing in double overtime. He's looking for his second star and the ninth overall for Indiana. Colin Masayunas on the ball for Morgantown, the one player in the starting lineup for Marshall that is from the States, from America. Vinicius Fernandez, the Brazilian on it. Knocks it out to his countryman, Alves. Linking up for Fernandez, but read well by Mooney. And the league can't control. And there will be a foul call as Emily was taken down. You will notice tactically for this Marshall squad, the technical side is great, but Chris Grassi, fourth season at the helm for Marshall head coach, not a bad record. Remember, struggled to even hit 500 just two seasons ago in 2019, put this team into the stratosphere. And they haven't looked back since, didn't lose a lot of numbers coming into the 2020 season. Quality chemistry, and defensively, if they do make mistakes, that tactical foul, they know how to step in quick. Grassi, you mentioned him building this program in his fourth year. They had a winning percentage of 38% before he arrived. In his four years, 62%, almost 63. And that's with a couple rough years at the beginning to get things going, as you see, sub-500 records. The last two years, they've been outstanding. Won back-to-back -back Conference USA championships. They went to the 2019 tournament, first time ever. They beat their in-state rival, WVU. And now the next time they're in the tournament, they've won four games, and three of them over soccer royalty in Clemson. Georgetown, Clemson was the number one overall seed this tournament. Georgetown, the defending champs. And then they beat UNC, who was in the College Cup for the third time in five years to get to this point. And now Indiana ahead of them. Thomas War battling for possession there for Indiana. Brett Beebe with the throw in back to Joey Mayer. Freshman we talked about earlier. Back to the redshirt freshman, Daniel Mooney. They both have started every match they've been available for this year. Cleared out by Alves is Endemy. And Sorin Stoika is going to come right in and get involved. Second foul, both on Alves. A freshman from Sao Paulo. He was Conference USA all-freshman team this year. As you know, Dallin, I'm always appreciative of gentlemen introducing themselves to the opposition. Welcome to the national championship. Here we Alves, huh? Some fun on that right-hand side. A lot of speed in Endley. That's going to be a fun battle. Center back mentality in you there? Like to get stuck in? I mean, you could look at it that way. Um, I'm not going to say no. Yeah. N neither confirming nor denying. I know a couple of referees are listening right now, so <laughs> got to keep my friends behind the scenes. Palazzolo drops into some space. Sprays it out to Nick Sesic. The pitch transfer. Good ball played in. Malun Gumbali was the potential recipient, but defended well. Milo Yosef gets cleaned out as he tried to possess the ball. Talented forward. Fernandez on it again. Semla, the German native, taking a quite a Route like Odysseus to get here. The keeper from Germany to Barton Community College in Kansas for one year, then to Monroe College in the Bronx and New York for one year, and finds his way to Marshall as Chris Grassi has sold this program to players from all over the planet to come here, get a great education, and play for a community that truly loves them. And you can see that from their fan support. Here's Endeley battling, still Endeley. Oh, a little bit of contact. And Sarin Stoika waves it off. Eric Leinhos on it. Santos, the transfer from Duquesne. He's played every minute there, last 11 games. Out to Alves. Fernandez able to turn. He's got Dolabella next to him. Doesn't play him. Does now, and Dolabella didn't want it at that point. 
Linehouse dinks it over the top to Dolabella. His layoff does not connect. Alves. Yosef, last year's Conference USA Player of the Year. Finds Fernandez, a nice pocket of space. Fernandez trying to turn contact again, waved away by Stoika. Penalty or not for you, Devin? No, not okay. enough contact. And, and to be honest, the one on the other end of the field as well, it's grazed, right? I mean, th is there contact between the two of them? There's a little bit, but not enough, and certainly not enough to point to the penalty mark. And let's be very clear, I'm not just talking about in the opening minutes of a national final. Watch this ball down into the corner, little touch, starts to lean into it. The backside, it looks like he grabs him, but he doesn't. It's the foot dragging, and he's looking for it. And the other way, that's a flop almost. You're tough. You're tough. What do I know? I think it's a penalty both ways. I think there should have been two spot kicks, but I don't know what I'm talking about. Told you, I'm keeping friends. <laughs> got a referee assessors in the house. Met him just before the game. Glad you're, I'm glad your allegiances are real clear. No, That's here, good. Here, here's the thing about it, Down. Set that standard, but let them play. I've talked to you about this That's before. True. If you're going to let the boys play a little bit, just be consistent yeah. across the board. That's all I mind. Which he was right there. Yes, so. spot on. Both sides. Be definitive. You know, I don't want a gray area. If I have to look at it and question as to whether or not it's a pen, we have a problem. Linos, he's got men in the box, clips it in. Good recovery header, still loose. Falls to Fernandez. He's going to give it a go, deflects around, and Celentano, a sophomore from Naperville, Illinois, takes control. He was a Big Ten goalkeeper of the year. Those little hesitancy from Roman Celentano to come off his line. Watch right here. Starts to come, then comes back. Saw some indecision from the goalkeeper in the semifinal that plagued them a bit. Fortunately enough, didn't come back to hurt them but defensively. Notice how stout Indiana is in their recovery. Again, they are going to concede space. They will give up the possession battle. That's not the end of the world. It's what they force Marshall into their decision making once it does come to the final third and if they can close the routes down. Jamil Roberts, the Englishman, tracks it down. He's got the last two game winners in each game there against Georgetown and UNC. Back to Schneider, Max Schneider on it. Broken up by Schmidt. No foul call. Falls to Pizarra, almost. That's the National Player of the Year candidate, seven red. I haven't called his name yet. Schneider, give it a go. Why? And right there, you see UNC. I mean, against UNC, Marshall really struggled to get any shots. You see one shot on goal for the goal. They've only had four shots in their last two games total. They've already taken two in this game. Is that a credit to them starting better in this game, or has Indiana struggled a little bit with them? What would you attribute that to? No, Marshall has started better, and it's, it's the rotation that they've moved between Milo Yosef and Jamil Roberts. Roberts primarily employing his trade on the left flank. He's moved up a little bit higher. They're trying to get the speed of Milo Yo Yosef more involved in the game, and what's happened is Indiana recognized that, so they're pinching tight on the outside winger. It's just created a bit more space up top and separation between the back line for Indiana. You mentioned before that Indiana will concede possession. We'll come back to that as, as thundering herder, thundering forward. And there, Schmidt saying he didn't touch him. Stoika says play on, and Dolabella's got it. Lays it off to Yosef. And Yosef's ball goes wanting. Applying some pressure. Eventually, Hoosiers get it out. Fernandez is up after he got taken down. He's got the ball. Indiana conceded a ton of possession against Pitt, too. That game was about just you know yes. Friday night, not long ago. Is there any concern from a physicality standpoint, from an endurance standpoint, to do it again and be chasing for most of the game? Ask me in the 80th minute. <laughs> I will I will bring it back yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Circumvent that entire topic. No, it, it is a concern for sure, but at this point in time, no. Dolabella, tons of space. Ball, though, wouldn't want that one back. Well, you also have to recognize that this is a different animal that's taking place in front of us, okay? We're not talking five, ten games into the season. We're not talking a conference tournament game. As a player, moments are made in special circumstances. This is one of them. You will dig deep into your reserves in order to make that extra step, in order to push the tempo differently, to get stuck in here and there. That's why I'm not concerned for Indiana. Todd Yegley's not going to be either. You know, he admits that he knows they're going to sit and they're going to chase. They did the same thing in the semifinal matchup against Pitt. It was just questionably as to whether or not they could go the other way and then finish things off. That's my concern. Yeah. 
and these two teams have been outstanding defensively in recent games. You see their goals against average both top five. You see shutouts, they're tied for first with 10 apiece. They have made it difficult for teams to score on them, and particularly, obviously, Marshall's five shutouts in their last seven games. So as their competition has gone up in the tournament, they have maintained that form. Great tackle by Gumbali. It's easy to look at their opposition early on in the season and go, who did they play? Who did they beat, right? You know, there's yep. the win over Kentucky and the loss to Akron. People might balk at whether or not this was a seasoned or tested team, if you will. Now, they are the number 10 team in the nation, but I think you're, but that, that was prior to all these yes. wins they've had recently. So yes. they were getting credit for the wins they were racking up against teams that weren't that good. Charlotte's one of probably the best team they played. They were and they can't control the schedule. nation. Exactly. You got to yeah. play. You got to beat who's in front of you. And they've done that. And then while they've proven to everybody yeah. as they've gotten to the tournament and beaten everybody in front of them with some you know very small numbers next to their name. Maybe looking long for war. Asiunas battling him. Knocked out. Obviously, we're in the middle of the spring championship season here in the NCAA. Um, and this is a fall sport playing in the spring. So much is going on. So if you want to know who's the next to hoist the trophy, go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Men's and women's lacrosse coming up here in a couple weeks. Baseball and softball getting going. Softball had their selection show this weekend. Get to NCAA.com to get all the info. Zolo with the BB. Zara can't get on it. Dolabella finds Yosef in a pocket of space. Hangs it out to Roberts. He's got Fernandez unmarked in the box, but they recover. Roberts gives it a go. Plymouth Argyle Academy product out in England. Moore can't hold it up. the distinct point that Marshall was missing in their semifinal match, Allen, was that space that's being occupied just in front. Joey Mayer and Daniel Muni sort of rotating between Milo Yosef and Jamil Roberts at this point in time, but their inability to access it, not even take advantage of it, to access it at all because they were shut down. They respected the center backs of UNC. They knew exactly what was going to be in front of them, so they played from outside in, but now they're pretty much having the go of it. You know, they're able to be tactful on the ball because they have so many numbers up high. That's when they're at their best. Great combination play by Marshall. Here's Herbert Endley running it. Pace, he was dangerous against Pitt. He gets the shot up. Just wild. The sophomore had the moment. The Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota United Academy product in the semi. He almost had it again here. You notice the distance that he covers here because you can give respect. Respect is one thing, but allowing this to progress as far as it did is almost insanity, to be honest. And that Ali Zemmel on the back line was screaming at his squad to step up into it. You cannot allow Endley with his pace and his ability to break you down in 1v1 situations to get a strike off. He's got four career goals. He's a big game player. We mentioned the goal in the last game. He also scored against Marquette, the equalizer. They were down in that game, came back to win in the second or third round of the, this NCAA tournament. And he won in a double overtime game against Pick back in 19. He won it in that game. So with big moments come up, Endley's a guy, number 17 in red, to watch. BB tries to connect with Kumbali. Dispossessed by Fernandez. Alves. 
Here in Cary, North Carolina for the Men's College Cup Final. Marshall in Indiana, Devin Kerr, Dallin Cuff, and Lori Lindsay, your broadcast team. Herbert Enderley is on the ball, charging forward, looking for Becerra! Just wide, and Masayunas, did he get a piece of it? So when Stoika says no, and that is your National Player of the Year candidate in this game, Victor Becerra. A sophomore that could not convert there. Special players in special moments because he gets bounced off by Schneider in the midfield. Almost manhandled, but watch him just jet right into this space. He's not exactly known for his speed, but it's a great job finding another gear. Splits the two center backs, and this touch right here just gets away from him. When he's caught in the gray area there, Dallin, of do I want to get around the goalkeeper? Am I trying to pick out the bottom corner? It's well done at the tail end of it by Simla to close the angle off. 12 goals on the season for him. It's fourth in the nation for Becerra. There's Milo Yosef on it. Finds Fernandez, lays it for Yosef. He'll give it a ride! Right to Celentano's hands. This is what you expect out of Roman Celentano. Said he was shaky in the semifinal matchup and to be shaky for him, number one is out of character. Number two is odd because he does control this team so much and he never really fully recovered for it. I don't think he was tested that much, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But in this one early on, ball's being whipped in from the side. Combination play, top of the 18, strike from distance. Outside of that one hesitation coming out from the corner, he's been great. BB went through Fernandez. Get down to Lori in the in between the benches. What do you got down there, Lori? Yeah, I just spoke to the Indiana coaching staff, at, trying to see how they feel like this first part of this first half is going. Felt like they've gotten stretched a little bit on the press, need to stay tight in between the lines, but still look to get in the lead on the counter attack as much as possible. And Lee has had some opportunities in the transition game. Dolabella to Yosef, who lays it back to Schneider. Meinhaus. No play. And looking back post, Celentano comes out to claim. Sesic on it. He switches it back to BB. Actually, Bezerra will come drop and pick it up. Gumbali. And Ali gets there. A lot of contact. And yes, that'll be a foul and maybe more. Alves was talked to earlier. And that's going to be your left back. Third time's the charm here in the first two. Let him get away with it a little bit. Called a foul, but it was a stern talking to. Leads heavily on Endley here, and now that's that's a real cause for concern, Dallin, because endley has been very active in the one-on-ones. Gabriel Alves, and the way that they use him in the attack and transition, his ability to now track back and mark up against the young sophomore and a blade Minnesota. You're going to have to keep an eye on that. And Chris Grassi does not substitute a ton, so your left back, 20 minutes into this match, has he's carrying a yellow car that is absolutely something to watch, as you mentioned. That battle with Endeley would be interesting, you said the first 30 seconds. See how that plays out now. Joe Schmidt, the dredgeshirt junior, over the ball. The Ohio native to serve it in, and let's reset this. Trip it in low, headed down off the post! Daniel Mooney almost capitalized! Plays it out as Yosef was trying to get on the counter. They were crawling on the back stick here for separation. Joey Mayer doing a little bit of battle and just check right outside the top of the six. Good job by the center back, creating the space for himself. Textbook header up over the top of the defender, right to the bottom corner. Ali Semla, you're welcome. Kiss that post, buddy. <laughs> no doubt. Long ball played. Celentano waits. Middle, middle. 
Smith, driven ball, read well by DeSantos. Villabella, head up in space. Good read by Phoebe. As Phoebe goes down, we'll tell you about our next MLS match on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Saturday afternoon, Western Conference matchup. Second place, LA Ga Galaxy hosts the Portland Timber Timbers. Yo, Chicharito. Dude can't stop scoring. He's not bad, is he? He's got seven goals. Mexican national team still doesn't seem like they want to call him up for all these international games they have this summer, whether that be Nations League or uh, obviously Copa, like all types of different things going on here. Qualifiers coming up September as Gumbali battles. That game is 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Hernandez drives it out to Alves. He's able to get there. The midfield, it's really interesting what Indiana have done with their ability to compact. It's, it is similar to the semifinal matchup, to be fair, against Pitt and how active their midfield is. It's a different shape for Marshall, but they've almost removed in totality Max Schneider and Pedro Dolabella. Dolabella playing a little higher, almost convoluting the space with Vitor Diaz. Can't get either one of them on the ball. So you're seeing a lot of rotation to the outside. Opening 10, 15 minutes, they were able to come down route one get their ticky-tack type players on the ball, but Indiana has now stricken those movements to much smaller spaces. The back line's figured it out. They're keeping everything in front of them. Just go to side to side. Todd Yeager will take that all day long. Marshall's trying to accomplish something that no unseeded team has done before. Now, they started seeding teams to 16 back in 2003. Three unseeded teams have gotten themselves to the College Cup final, but none have actually won it. Now, granted, because of the COVID year and having 12 less teams than normal, only eight were seeded, but still Marshall would fall into that category as Dolabella, excuse me, Fernandez is on it in space. Still Fernandez, he's going to give it a hit. He does! Oh, what a save by Celentano! Just stop it. This is nastiness from Celentano. Bottom corner. I mean, this thing is game, set, match. Bottom corner. 100%. This is a goal. If not for the escapades of one of the most talked about names in between the pipes in college soccer, Marshall's out in front. Marshall will take the corner. This is only their sixth corner kick of the tournament. Kind of a bizarre stat for a team that possesses the ball so much. In swinger. Cleared out. Nice one two between Fernandez and Yosef. No Fernandez. Schneider on it. Dos Santos. Back to the sophomore from Germany. Bayern Leverkusen was his club growing up in Germany. I think a lot of people at home will probably look and see just seconds ago, and it's going to continue that way right now, Dallin. How many players? are within this half and how close they are in proximity to the back line. But that's nothing new for Marshall. They can break you down in small spaces. They just want to be on the ball. They'll pick and choose their moments. They'll work side to side. You know, if Indiana is willing to give them that, they'll take their time because they want to win the possession battle. That's how they scored their goal against Georgetown. I mean, you had 20 guys outside of the goalkeeper <laughs> in or around the top of the 18, and yet still they were able to capitalize. Zara plays it out to War. Holds it up and sends it back to Mooney. Celentano to play it long. Fernandez running at the back line. Still Fernandez. Shot. Save Celentano again. 
That's a good one, but the one before is much better. Watch this in transition as it opens up over the right shoulder from Marshall. And Celentano specifically, watch his positioning. He has to cover a lot of ground here because it can go to his right or to his left. He starts to cheat a little to the right, then comes back to his left. Watch this thing dip, gets low, hands extended. I mean, you could teach a lot of this, but some of this is just pure instinct and his ability to lay out and make a fantastic save. Celentano, 10 shutouts on the year, tied for first in the country. And the Marshall crowd coming to life. Endley skips past the Snyder's challenge. He'll take a shot, and it's just wide! Knocking on the door again. Smart shift here by Endley coming over. Thomas Warhead actually dropped to the backside, looking for hold-up play. He comes in, pocket just opens up. And it is amazing to me, 25 minutes into this match, how much respect they're giving this young man. You saw the tape in the semifinal. You saw the goal he was capable of. Someone from Marshall's got to step up in and send a message. He split two pit defenders and then laced an absolute rocket at the top of the net to give them the one nothing win. Dolabella's got Linos in the acres of space and he plays the right back getting forward. In a foot race with BB and he's going to win it. Chops it back onto his left foot. Short for Yosef, couldn't control it. Hernandez is going to tee it up. Nope. Clever. Alves. Played in, Celentano claims. Let's get back down to the field. Lori has more on the Thundering Herd. Lori? Yeah, I'm hearing from the Marshall bench that they're incredibly pleased with how this half is going. They prepared for everything that Indiana's throwing out at them. Now it's just about cleaning up their touches in order to execute in the final third. Thank you, Lori. Chris Grassi's crew in his fourth year as the head coach came from Charles College of Charleston where they won a couple Division II titles. Before that, he was an assistant in Michigan. So as he told us, I'm familiar with Indiana. He has tremendous respect for what they've done as a program, how great they've been, and the Yagley family, both father and son, Jerry, and the current coach, Todd. But he's very clear that we're not the underdog. He thinks his team is the better team, and they can go out and prove that right now. Mayor to Mooney. Long ball looking for Gumbali, picked off by Linehouse. Getting a chance to start striding forward again. He's been up and down this right side. Ooh, deflected off of Nate Ward, who just subbed in for Thomas Ward in the last dead ball. Ward, the freshman. Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Product of the Beadling Soccer Program. Great club in Pennsylvania. Yunus on it. Back to DeSantos. Linos wants it up the right near side here. They don't play him. Dolabella trying to get around the corner on BB. Can't do it. Michael stepping forward into space. To Roberts. 
Vitor Diaz. Have not mentioned him much. He is the All-American for Marshall. Player of the year in the conference. On the ball again. Dropping into a little more space here, trying to get bring the game into him. Shades of Valentin Noel in the semifinal matchup against Pitt. Removed the star playmaker, right? I mean, he had two quality touches, or even better looks on goal yep. the entire match. Nice turn by Dolabella. Fernandez. Roberts. Flipped in. Cleared out. Second corner of the match for the Thundering Herd. It needs to be noted that although defensively, Indiana is working a lot. And we, we knew they were going to come yep. in, so did Todd Yagley. The chances for Marshall, good ones, are still from distance. Yep. You know, this is coming 20, 25 yards out with a really good goalkeeper that you expect to make those types of saves. As good as they have been, you expect Salentano to step in and help out like that. Roberts to take. One swinging ball. And an out by Kumbali. Cut back, laid in. Looking for Yosef. Off the mark. Pretty sure Vitor Diaz took a little offense to our comment a second ago with his work <laughs> down in the corner here. I mentioned Tiki Tack before. He can do all the work by himself, though. And there's the center back pairing, right? Mm -hmm. And Muni, the youngster, quick little cutback. And all you're looking to do here is just find space. You want to put this ball up and allow someone like Milo Yosef or Jamil Roberts to go up and get it. He has a Diaz on it again. Hernandez. Roberts makes a near post run. Almost fell for Diaz and appeals for a handball. <laughs> Fans yelling VAR just in case you're new to college soccer. You cannot review a play like that. There is only few instances for video assisted refereeing, which is VAR. If the ball did or did not cross the goal line on a goal, if there is a disciplinary issue uh, or mistaken identity is when you can look at the replay. And obviously, a handball in the box does not fit that criteria. Well, I can fit into two out of three of those categories. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> mistaken identity and, <laughs> and maybe something inside the box, but it's not a pen. Watch the chest. It's low. Oh, second review. Didn't look like it was. Daniel Mooney, we have got away with one right there. Oh, that's low. And, and, you know, the rules, the way that they state now is that it's at the bottom of your sleeve. Basically, the armpit area, the bottom of your sleeve where that stops, that's the no-no zone. You, you, <laughs> you extend beyond that. Now you've gotten yourself in trouble. And I tell you, the first look that we saw behind the scenes, I said, no way, not happening. Real time, absolutely not. When you slow it down like that, you can see the arm pinching a little bit. Yeah. And the referee... He didn't have his binoculars on on that one. Ball played through to Dolabella and just couldn't control it. Attempted through ball from Alves. Let's take another look. Yes, no, maybe so. Watch the right arm. Oh, no, it just looks... All right. It's one of those fake images. You know, technology these days. Good work by our guys in the truck. Absolutely. Thank you for serving that up again. Saving my job. I mean... I don't think you get fired for stuff like that. Many That's people are wrong about a lot of stuff with mics in their mouths, but it's okay. I'm holding to that one. <laughs> you just became the agent to argue for. <laughs> Possible turnover here as Ward tries to keep it in. Now falls to Bezerra. Bezerra's going to topple over. and No call. Max Schneider has some choice words for the Mac Herman finalist. Breaking the action. Stay about our next WNBA game on ESPN2 and the ESPN app as always. Tomorrow night, Diana Taurasi, arguably the best to ever do it in the Mercury in Washington to take on the Mystics at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Then Asia Wilson and the Aces square off against Brianna Stewart. Maybe the future best to ever do it in the Storm. Seattle beat Las Vegas 97-83 on Saturday. Great stuff coming your way in the WNBA as always.
Ryan Wittenbrink coming in for Nate Ward at the last break. Ward, the freshman, he was subbed on and then subbed off. Let's see if there's any injury issue there for Ward. Wittenbrink, the redshirt sophomore, scored in the Elite Eight game, number 18 in red, against Seton Hall to put them into the College Cup. They won that game 2-0. Nice control. Diaz continues to drop deeper to get on the ball. Meinhouse in a foot race with Gumbali. And Gumbali just barely wins. And the sophomore's able to get it out. Third corner of the match for Marshall. Third corner of the match, as we said, coming into this game, they only had five corners in the whole tournament. That's four matches. They only had five corners. So we'll see if they can deliver here from this set piece. Roberts again. And swing loose. Poked to the left. Saved by Celentano. And a Hoosier is down on the end line. And the referee Stoika telling the training staff to get out there immediately. Trying to ID who that is, is the players on his back, I believe. Yeah, that's Joe Schmidt. It's going be Palazzolo, excuse me. And Palazzolo's up and walking off. Gives Indiana players a chance to get some water. Let's take a look here. It's a very difficult take from Vitor Diaz, top of the 18. As this ball comes back out, Rough challenge on the back post, but, you know, coming up, the apex, when it comes up off the turf like that, it's very difficult to get enough power, follow through, and keep it on frame. And Vitor Diaz does a good job to get two out of three right. Mm -hmm. You know, he's able to redirect it into traffic. Doesn't have a lot of power behind it, but he gets it on frame. That's most important. Salentano again, though. Great save, and our referee doing what he's supposed to do, letting everybody know that, you know, no more, no more hydration breaks in this one. Yeah, Santa, and time for a water break. Let's get back on the field as Palazzolo has to go off the field because the training staff came on. And Palazzolo, this redshirt senior from St. Louis, spent time in the USU 17 setup, part of the residency in Bradenton, Florida, before making his way to Indiana. Also played for the great club, St. Louis FC. Out to Nick Sessick. Endeley is very effective early on. We haven't heard much from him recently. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. No, but watch this switch, though, because with Whitbrink coming on, they move Endeley up top there. That's a mismatch with Ian Dos Santos. Much more speed for the youngster from Indiana, and especially because you've got the yellow card by Alves at the left back spot. Wittenbrink can turn up the tempo himself. Uh-oh, that turnover. Dolabella's gonna have a numbers forward situation. Yosef on the left. Cuts inside. He's it back. Schneider's gonna keep it in, though. Roberts sees Dolabella! Just out of reach. Oh, the senior from Brasilia was inches away. Well, it's so difficult against Marshall because you're looking at a holding midfielder that's made a 45-yard run separating on that back right side of the Indiana back line. And Jamil Roberts on the other side with his pace and his presence in the nine spot are out on the 11. Coming in, now he's the distributor. There's so many guys on the front line for the hurt and the guys that come out of the midfield that you have to be so aware of. That's why I talked about the separation on the back line and to watch it because communication is difficult in general at this level. Yet alone when you get someone like a Vitor Diaz, but then you get Roberts, you get Dolabetta of the middle, Fernandez on the right side. It's a relative who's who of attacking options moving forward. Wow. There's Yosef, as we said, he was last year's Conference USA Player of the Year. 12 goals in that campaign. Only four in this game, but four this year, but he's still very dangerous as he talks with Sarin Stoika. The current Conference USA Player of the Year is Vitor Diaz. Let's take a look and see what happened here. And Nick Sesek was saying get up right away. 
But Yosef may have been trying to embellish his shot to the face a bit. Yosef, the sophomore from Germany, used to play for Borussia Mönchengladbach, one of Germany's better clubs, although not having the best year, to say the least. Molly Semla on the ball. Over hits his pass. it on to Wittenbrink. And Sessa continues his run. The Santos reads it the whole way though. And Roberts goes back from the offside position. First offside of the match. Long for Endeley. Bali almost wins the second ball. Endeley does. He's crowded out quickly by the thundering herd. Diaz. Turned over. Endeley now run at the back line. Know how dangerous he can be. Almost gets it through to Bezerra. Still might be Bezerra. Shot. Cleaned up late by Masi Yunus for the take it out for the corner. First corner of the match, Victor Bezerra almost broke the deadlock. The pace, the separation, we've talked about it a couple of times, and the redirect by Max Schneider puts it right in front of the pack. Victor Bezerra, his last second tackle though, Masayunas. It's nice when you don't have to call a center back's name, and when you do, it's for good measure. Bezerra to take it. First corner for the Hoosiers. Driven ball toward the back post, and oh! Mooney hit the post earlier and this one was on a platter. He's going to want this one back because the spectacular that was Bezerra and his ability to pick out the far post is actually probably going to be overshadowed by the fact that Semla doesn't do a good job coming off his line and the center back from Indiana, yeah, Muni. I mean this is stuff where just lean into it, fall. Anything. Just keep your arms out of the way and hope that it knocks something off your body and somehow, some way, outside of the 8x8. Joe Schmidt goes down in a heap. He wanted a foul. He doesn't get it. Called on him. Indiana has six shots, none of them on goal. They did hit a post, and it was Mooney who did it earlier off a dead ball. Linehouse now coming the other way. He's got Roberts back, plays him. Schneider in space. Almost falls for Fernandez. BB was there to take care of it. Two and a half to go here, first half. Still nil-nil, but we've had chances, that's for sure. Both teams have hit the post. Five thousand tickets were able to be sold to this match. Only twenty eight hundred on Friday for the doubleheader. Some rule changes took place in Carolina by the governor announced over the course of the weekend. So now five thousand available for this match, and all five thousand were sold. A lot of atmosphere early, Devin. I feel like it's almost like a tension, a quiet tension now has fallen over this crowd. And people are nervous. And the fact that it's going back and forth, yeah. I would say that the game has opened up, but opportunities nerve wracking for both these supporters groups. Steiner out to Alves. 
two Marshall players there. I'm not sure who to take it, but it goes to Dalobella back to Linehorse. Coming to life in the thundering herd here. It's been a long time since folk were fans too. Fans got they've got to get conditioned again to make it the full 45 and do a break into 45. It ain't easy. Salantano's ball picked off by Diaz. A dangerous area. All-American is on it, working on Sessic. Still working on Sessic. Oh, good, well defended. 25 seconds to go, 23 now. Corner will be taken. And Soren Stoika is actually going to stop the clock. As Sessic slow to get up. Just got knocked in the eye here at the tail end of it in this tackle. It's a really good tackle by Nick Sessic. Just outside the top of the 18. So careful as a defender in these situations. You leave your feet, you better be absolutely sure you're going to be able to get a challenge on the ball, especially like someone like Vitor Diaz. And something to note, though, because Sesic had the training stay, came out, he has to go off the pitch. They can substitute for him, and they are going to do that right now. I believe the dynasty will continue. I believe that is Ben Yegley, yes. That is the coach, Todd Yegley's son, the grandson of Jerry Yegley, the great coach of Indiana, six-time national champion, 30 years as the coach. Ben checking in the match to close the half. Lineholz takes it. Floated ball toward the spot. Bodies fall. Celentano comes to claim, and there will be a foul called. Half's going to tick down. And we're going into the break nil-nil. Devin, your thoughts on the first 45? A little surprise from Marshall at their ability to allow Indiana to explore right around midfield or so, especially with Enderley. You know, they're pressing, which I'm not, I'm not surprised at at all. But the back line isn't stepping as well, so there's about a 25, 30-yard gap. Got to fix that in the second half. Indiana, on the other hand, not bad. Not bad at all. Just keep the game in front of you. Got to take advantage of your opportunities because they're both coming for both squads. Well, we're going to take a break here at Cary, North Carolina. When we come back, we'll hear from the coaches. Nil-nil, College Cup, everything to play for in the second half. Welcome back to Salem Stadium at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina, the site of the College Cup final here tonight between the Marshall Thundering Herd and Indiana. 0-0 at the break. Alongside Devin Kerr, I'm Dallin Cup. It is nil-nil, but not for a one to try. And there were opportunities and started with Herbert Enderley, the guy that broke the deadlock in the, for Indiana against Pitt in the semifinal. Heavyweight title fight in full effect, and you cannot allow this passage of play to continue if you're Marshall. Multiple times in the first half, space out in front. Enderley trying to pick out the bottom corner. There would be a reaction, though. A couple coming from Marshall. Yosef from distance, you would see Celentano get involved. He was a key factor for Indiana. And how about the center back, Daniel Muni? The one off the post on one end, can't pick out on the other side. This had an interesting flow to it, where it just seemed like when things started to settle down, it went into overdrive. Here's the chance that I'm talking about. That's a sitter that's got to be in the back of the net. And you have to ask questions of Ali Simla. So commanding of his box, coming off his line, doesn't get anywhere near that cross. One thing to note, you see eight to six in shots, but Indiana has yet to hit the target. They hit the post. You saw the sitter from Mooney. What else jumps out to you, Dev? That's the main issue, for sure, because it's the same exact thing that plagued them in their semifinal game against Pitt. Yegley recognizing, he said, listen, we're going to sit back. We're going to create chances, but we're not going to have a bunch. In order to win a championship match against Marshall, we've got to be clinical in the final third. They have not been. They have not done that. And Coach Yegley knows what it takes to win a title. He won back in 2012. This program is about expectations to always win championships. We'll see if they can close it and find a way to get their ninth title in the second 45. Kickoff coming up next. You're watching the NCAA College Cup Final. Go Hoosiers! 
We're getting ready to kick off the second half here. College Cup on the line between Marshall and Indiana. 0-0 at the break, all to play for in the second half. Let's take a look at the Cup Capital One Cup standings as teams compete for a combined 400,000 in student athlete scholarships from Capital One. Right now, Stanford in the women's side and a slight lead. Alabama, a little bit more on the men's side. Stanford's got a monopoly on this, huh? Well, they do have a lot of sports. They've cut some of them, but they are outstanding in everything they do. And smart. Uh, yes, very smart. And, and very, very smart. Yeah. Uh, that we definitely know. Log on to CapitalOne.com for more information. Both teams are on the pitch. And we're getting set up here to talk to Todd Yegley, the son of Jerry Yegley, who you're looking at right now. Let's get to Todd. Coach, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, you guys had yeah, a, a solid first half. It was an interest, entertaining match. What was your message to the team in the break to break the deadlock? Well, I mean, Marshall asked a lot of questions with their spacing, with their movement. Um, our press wasn't effective in the first 20, so we dropped our line a little bit. Um, and we're going to pick and choose on, on when we step out and I think their, uh, you know, their ability to want to jam ball central, I think we can nip them, uh, get them on the transition, and then on, on moments we could push our lines up a little bit and, and make it hard for them to play out because they do like to play um, and a bit stubborn with it. So it's just picking and choosing those moments um, and then controlling the tempo when we can. Those are the, kind of the, the, the big messages from that. We create the best chances of the half. So uh, you know they were there for us. We just got to convert. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And he is right. They hit the post. One time, Daniel Mooney, the sophomore, center back at the post once. He also missed a sitter that could have been a goal. Um, but overall, right now, we are at nil-nil right now as we kick off the second half. Seren Stoika blows the whistle. College Cup final. Somebody's walking away as a national champion. Are we 45 minutes from finding that out, or will it be more like it was on the women's side earlier today? With that said, let's get down to Lori Lindsay, former women's national team player who's on the sidelines. Lori? Yeah, and just add to what Coach Todd Yeagley said. I spoke with assistant coach for Indiana University, Kevin Robson. He said they're going to move Indy into the middle, more central up top to see if he can get on the break in transition. They're not afraid to continue to sit deep. They felt like they created enough chances. And then also, can they get Bazzaro on the ball more often to help create up top? That was Endley trying to turn there. 17 in red. Bazzaro, 7 in red. Good step by Mooney. Zara is the National Player of the Year candidate, one of the three finalists. Ryan Wittenbrink plays it in. He started the half in place of Thomas Ward, the one change on the field. Marshall's 11 remains unchanged. They have not subbed at all in the first half. And just so that you are tuning into college soccer, you can sub in the second half and re-enter the match. So anybody that exits the pitch is not necessarily done for the day. What are your thoughts on having Endley be more central, Devin? Oh, I talked about it 25, 30 minutes in the match. How was a mismatch for the back line? There's space there. You know, the speed is a big one for me because as Bazera plays alongside Endley, now you have to ask questions if you're on the Marshall back line. Do I pay as much respect as I have? Because the answer is no to start that. But do I pay as much respect as I have to Endley? No, you have to get tighter. But as you get tighter on him, now Bezerra in those finite little spaces, he can operate more. Yeah. And you've still got the speed of Wittenbrink on the outside that gave Alves a lot of problems in the first half. And remember, he's sitting on a yellow card. Yeah. 16 from the Thunding Herd, your left back at the bottom part of your screen right there. Gabriel Alves has the one card issued in the first half. Took a yellow 20 minutes in as he committed a couple fouls. And the last one was a professional foul against Herbert Endeley. Stop a break. Paulo Dallabella, Brazilian on the ball, knocks it out to Max Schneider, the German. A couple other Brazilians connecting, Diaz and Alves. Colin Massiunas on the ball. Brett Beebe with the throwback to Joey Mayer, freshman. Joe Schmidt pings it out to Nick Sessic, connecting with Bezerra. Read very well by DeSantos. And 
it will be Thunder Herb with throw. Marshall on the year, 72% of their goals, 21 of 29 have come after the half. That's how they won against Georgetown 1-0. That's how they, how they won against UNC 1-0. We'll see if that trend can continue. And Leona. 1v1 with Masayunas, the center back, pulled out a little wide. Cuts inside, turns on the jet, still Endeley, goes down. And the spot is going to be right outside the 18. Will there be a card? Yes, there will be. Man, Endeley has a different gear. And Masayunas will take the yellow. In that semifinal matchup, there was really only one bright spark on the front line for Indiana, it was Endeley. Sometimes when you get players like this that are feeling their performance, you just got to let them go. And he had support over the right shoulder. But look at this focus. Just splits three defenders. Even Schneider can't catch up. Dos Santos stuck, flat-footed. Great job by Endeley to exploit the space in front of him. Minnesota United Academy product from Blaine, Minnesota. He was a high school All-American. He was Mr. Soccer at Minnesota. Big Ten All-Freshman team last year. This year, second team All-Big Ten in his sophomore campaign. And he has showed on the national stage why with big time performances throughout this tournament. And now an opportunity here. Now you've got a real problem if you're Ali Semla because of the ball strikers in front of you. Joe Schmidt, his ability to go one way. Bezerra will ask multiple questions. Four is an interesting look. Thought he would have gone five. That's a difficult angle to pick out because it's so close to the top of the 18. But if anyone, it's Bezerra. The touch. Bezerra driven, saying loose. Oh! It didn't matter because Joey Mayer was offside, but he dared to Wando right there. Old school stuff, just get it outside the wall. Even though it was small in general, mistake by Marshall, they only go four because not only from the set piece, but as the ball is touched, there's not enough to rush. No one comes in except one center back and look at all the space that Pizarra has. Pick your poison. Goes low with pace, good save, but that's twice that Indiana have missed sitters right around the six-yard box. And you see he was offside. The flag did go up, but here's potentially another opportunity. Bezerra goes down all too easily in the box. And that'll be turned over. But that was the first shot on goal. Asking question of Semla, and he stepped up. And now here comes Alves to Dolabella. Numbers in front, but he will pull it back. as the outside back operating centrally, Max Schneider. Knocks it over to Yosef. Yosef and Diaz, the last Diaz, the last two Conference USA players of the year. Ping it back and forth. Yosef cutting inside, playing a teasing ball in, but Dola Bella couldn't get there. Just gonna plant the seat now and understand that for a team, offside or not, start missing chances like this. Yeah. It, it, it does something to your psyche where you start second guessing whether you're a center back or not, is this thing ever going to go in? Yeah. Right? And Bezerra from at the top of the 18. Daniel Muni, of course, twice in the first half, once off the post. Now Jack Mayer. I understand he's in an offside position, but you look back over as a player with all your boys on the field and say, what do we got to do to get one in the back of the net? It's a very good point. And those have been both their center backs. Mooney and Mayer have had their best chances, but those are chances that you just need to put away, period. And Diaz goes down hard. And Joe Schmidt is now going to go in the box, in the book. The referee let him play a little bit in the first half, but now he's tightening his grip on this game. The tackles start to fly. Rio Alves all the way back midway through the first half point. He's the first recipient. Now cards are being brandished a little bit more regularly. Late tackle there for sure on Vitor Diaz. Roberts deflected by Bezerra, but Roberts will win the foot race. Good 
Martin bring for the clear. And looks like Bezerra is down in the middle of the pitch. Yes, he is. And they call on the training staff immediately. That's your Big Ten Player of the Year, first team All-American. National Player of the Year, the Matt Herman Trophy finalist, one of three players. Valentin Noel played for Pitt in that semifinal. So two of the three got it to College Cup. And Bezerra's up, and he's okay. Gloria Manda, we talked about in the halftime. Nation's leading goal scorer from Oregon State. Bezerra looks like he's up and okay. Just the midsection. Checking on dinner. Make sure he's all right. I'm going to leave midsection alone. We're going to keep moving. Maybe I'll read a promo. Let's do that. Spring season underway here. Spring championship season, the fall championship season. Bezerra comes right in looking for a piece of Dolabella. So many different titles being given away. Of course, one here tonight, two tonight actually, the women and the men here in men's soccer. Go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships to learn more, get the latest information, ticket options, all that on NCAA.com. Stoika, the referee, made contact, but they still made it to its destination. Almost knocked it on to Yosef. Yosef working on Sesek. A 1v2, and they'll take it out for a corner again. Fifth of the match. Marshall had five corners coming into this game for the entire tournament. The four previous games, they now have the fifth corner of the match. Line host, the right back is over it. Jamil Roberts is short. And Roberts exits. Looked in toward the spot. Dola Bella tried to get his head on it. Comes down to Endely. Some complaints for handball there. But Endely now a chance to break. A lot of green and white jerseys around him. Line host is all over him. And really just pulling up, stretching his right calf of his. More of attrition starting to kick in here. So active for Indiana. On this front line, as mentioned, he was the bright spotlight for the Hoosiers in their semifinal match. Of course, got the goal that sent them here. He's doing a lot of work, both on and off the ball, and his runs are eventually going to creep up. That's what you alluded to in the first half. You know, and I understand it's on the offensive side of the ball, but he is working defensively. Needs help, to yep. be honest. They need some sort of support when they move forward because he can't do it all on his own. Dolabella turns out of trouble. Knocks it out to Alves. Semla played back to his feet. Diaz. Alizola. Alves. He's it off to Schneider. Numbers in the box. Played it, looking for Yosa. Not to do it. Chris Grassi looking to win his first national title. He was at Division II, University of Charleston. He was part of two teams who were runners-up. They've made it to the stage of the D2 level. But now here at the D1 level, first time Marshall's ever here. 
Only five tournament wins in their history. Their first one was in 2019, trying to make history here and really put Marshall on the college soccer map. Put a star on the crest of their jersey. Yosef charging at Sessa. Yosef trying to cut to the right foot. Shot bends by. Malou Gumbale goes down. This is really similar to the strike that Vizera had in the second half against Pitt, where he just cutting across, pulls it back over to the right shoulder, and then the trailing space on the back post, just asking it to tuck itself home. Not enough English on the ball, though. Well, they are tending to Gumbale, just to come off of the story. Is Gumbale is actually doing a lot more than we thought he would. And you see Jerry Yegley there wondering if Gumbale's going to be okay. An institution in college soccer, Todd Yegley's father. 30 years at the helm, six national championships. The godfather. The godfather. Tells, preach, man. 16 college cups. He made it to 12 finals. They made it to 16 as a program. He was there for 12 of them. He leaves. Todd Yegley takes over. He gets to the 2012 final, they win that. This is his fourth final, he's been a national coach of the year. And then how about his sons? We saw Ben feature in the first half for a few minutes, and Grant, the freshman, on this squad as well. It is a family tradition in Indiana, and he talked a lot about that, that it's not so much pressure, but it's an expectation. This is what you come to Indiana for, is to play in these moments, to be part of these games, and we play for each other, and we play for all the guys that came before us what is really the true essence of a program when it's not just about the 11 on the field, it's the hundreds that have played before as Diaz charges through the middle of the Hoosiers team. He hesitates, gets the shot at the flex. Celentano, and he didn't give up the rebound because on the doorstep was Roberts. Another very difficult save for Roman Celentano. And this is why you cannot allow him to run. Emily on one end, look at all the space. You just can't, you gotta step into this and it comes really late from the center back, Daniel Muni. Notice, he sits, he sits, he's got support. If you're the lone soldier on the back line, then you can pay that respect. Otherwise, you've got to step in there because the support is there. Step up into the space and apply the pressure. And let's get down to Lori with Mara Marshall. Yeah, and just hearing from the Marshall bench and saying that they feel like the all the momentum is going their way. It's just a matter of time. They're fine with staying compact, just making sure they keep in the lane. In the lead at bay. Other than that, just keep pressing. Joseph tries to dink it over the top, but well read by Beebe. Brett Beebe making a big interception there. And you can actually, you can see the crowd and see a little energy coming more from the Marshall fans as I think they are reflecting what, Al, what Lori's talking about over there that this, the, the pressure is mounting on the Hoosiers. They can feel it. Diaz skipping around. And down to your point about the fans, even the coaching staff for Marshall knows how important they are, egging them on, telling them to keep cheering. The, these fans, the sea of green behind me is wild, and they know how important they are to keep motivating this team. No doubt. And wild is the right word. They, they again, were there Friday when we had the semifinal. I, you know, four hours, five hours before kickoff. They were in the parking lot, ready to go. Uh, let's say beverages in hand and even more came down more supporters came down over the weekend and they are enjoying their time in Raleigh are hoping they see history and trying to urge their team forward as Ben Yagley checks in the match they had some kind of RV set up over there unfortunately the eviction notice was served that one <laughs> their RV did get tossed out of that lot they were in but guess what the party continued they were not worried about it as Bezerra spins off a little trouble Marshall Maniacs Malum Gumbale still getting worked on on the sidelines. It's tight. Very tight on that leg that they're working. Just went down top of the 18, pulled up lane. Did he tweak it? That's going to be the key question moving forward. And comes down LaBella forward. He's able to dink it toward the back post. Nobody home but Wittenbrink.
Milo Yosef trying to roll Mooney unsuccessfully. Nice turn by Endeley. He's dragged down by Dolabella. Milo Yosef better be better be careful. A lot of descent there right in Sir Stoika's, Stoika's face. Going to pick up a yellow for no reason. This one's a little light to be fair. Watch the turn inside. It's really well done. On the outside by Endeley, but to be fair, he doesn't establish his position. He slips. He doesn't have full control. That's the argument coming from Dolabella as well. I'm siding with Marshall on this one. Joey Mayer, a couple heavy touches into the midfield. He can get the pass to Thomas War, who's on for Goombale. Uh-oh. Four. You normally see that from Marshall's back line. That's the quality on the ball building out. His long balls across are quite calculated. And they do take that measure. So surprised that they haven't found a way, given the space that's there. Because again, Endley and Wittenbrink, we talked about that combination before, but with the change of Gumbali going off, they're looking for a balance at this point in time because as much work as he's done defensively, that goes back to the point a second ago that you can't have one player do it all. And everything has been through the right or Endley coming down the middle. You're not seeing it from a striker in the nine. You're not getting a presence on the left mid. You want to challenge this, this herd. You got to create separation and apply pressure. They just haven't been able to do it for the Hoosiers. Almost had one bad turnover, almost had a second one. Sessic steps forward though. Knocks it over to Schmidt. Yeglick. Brain trying to get by Linehouse. Linehouse wins that battle. There's some stepping forward. Trying to find Roberts. Flag goes up. Far side assistant. Brian Graves is all over it. Momentum is one thing, decision making is another for Marshall right now. And even though they're progressing heavily over this half field mark and really applying a lot of pressure to Indiana, they have not been very impressive in or around the top of the 18. A lot of poor decision making. There's another one from Milo Yosef where he could have easily attacked, cut inside, taken the space available to him. Instead, he slows down and for no apparent reason. Options are there. You take the most difficult one and you remove all the great ones around you. It's something the judgment has been clouded over the past couple of matches. Saw the same thing in their semifinal match as well as the quarterfinal. And yes, they were able to find victory, but not without post haste in some of their actions when they did move into the final third. Nice touch by Schneider to step out of some trouble. Hernandez. No, sir. Hernandez. He'll hit it from there. Doesn't. Little Bella. Alongside Devin Kerr, I'm Dallin Cuff. Lori Lindsay, former national teamer on the sidelines here from Cary, North Carolina. It's the College Cup. We handed out a women's trophy earlier today. Santa Clara winning their first title since 2004. We see some more history here as Vitor Diaz is in space, lays it off for Fernandez. Pass pulled him wide, back towards Roberts. A great reading of it by Beebe. Not out of trouble yet. Alves. Fernandez now about wide. A women's match came down to penalties. 4-1 win for the Broncos. Little 1-2. Still fought, still loose. And the last ditch defending by Mayer. And Diaz is down in the area. Slow to get up. He's up now. Yosef on the ball, looking for the cross. Fernandez tries to bring it down. Clever by the Brazilian. Alves into the attack. Alves gives it the shot. Not what you want. Get Nick Sesek in the first half on one end of the field, just outside the top of the 18. He said it's a defender. When the opposition gets this close, 
you have to be very careful with your decision making. Joey Mayer gets everything right on his challenge just outside the top of the six. Gets stuck in high boot for sure. Vitor Diaz had an excellent vision of what he wanted to do. Center back had other ideas. Dolabella, who's just on the ball, was egging on the, the, the thundering herd crowd. You saw it heard everybody get loud as Indiana fans reacted to it. Under 26 minutes to go. People starting to feel it right now. Our next MLS match, MLS match is on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app Saturday afternoon. Western Conference matchup, second place LA Galaxy hosts the Portland Timbers. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Chicharito's got seven goals. He can't stop scoring. Can one player from the Thundering Herd, though, break the deadlock? Maybe shot! Oh, Celentano. A little loose with it. Fernandez almost had it. Easy big fella. You've done everything right. All the difficult things, but sometimes it's the easy ones. Got to slow the game down. Take a big sigh right here. A little Emmy on the back end of it, too, on the, the late run. Lovely little dummy, to be fair, by Vinicius Fernandez. To allow this play to come right through. Sometimes Dallin, it's the no touches or just the tiny little ones allow the rest of this to develop. We saw that in the semifinal matchup where Vitor Diaz, though, maybe not necessarily at his highest level. One little touch in the back post. Emil Roberts answers the call. No, sir. Running in pace. Blasts it off. A Hoosier, and we're going to another corner. Pressure continuing to mount. Sixth corner of the match for the Thundering Herd. We'll have a couple subs. Malun Gumbale comes back in the match. Thomas Ward. And in comes Joao Souza for Vinicius Fernandez. Souza, a sophomore from Orlando City. And also now AJ Palazzolo comes back in for Ben Liegli, and Liegli still making his way off the pitch. First sub of the match for the Thundering Herd. Higher ball played in. Schneider trying to head it down. And some appeals from some Marshall players. Waved off by Stoika. I don't know if they thought he got fouled. I don't know. No, more along the lines of surprised that he's not able to, to get this one on frame. Max Schneider heading down. And Muni doing a good job just applying his presence. Now, it is interesting between all the different programs that we've had an opportunity to lay eyes on, and there's a rough challenge from uh -oh. Mazzara. A little housekeeping for our referee. All the yeah. programs we get an opportunity to lay our eyes on, how different they are in their ways in terms of substitutions. You get a Marshall team that likes to keep all of its team intact, doesn't make a lot of changes, took them 75 minutes in the Georgetown match to make one, as opposed to Georgetown, who will yeah. rotate four, five, six players at a time of course, the defending national champion got bounced because of their ability to keep that chemistry together. Chris Grassi knows what he wants. Talked about Indiana having it bred into their program. Marshall's not that far behind with the identity they've created under their manager. Zara floats it toward the back post. Semla way off his line. He corrals it. He's looking to start a little break here the other way. Diaz on it. Roberts ahead. Kumbale took out Diaz, and Diaz is down still. And Roberts wheels it back and plays it out. The referee, Srin Stoika, you can see it. I think he completely missed it. He's going to go converse with his near side AR, Eric Weisbrod. Weisbrod, excuse me. In real time, that it's right in front of us, Devin, from our broadcast position. It looked like it was a bit cynical in nature. And he was trying to allow this to play on, but look, there's a touch for sure. The, the, the brunt of it, though, comes on the second one with the follow through. He can't control that because his leg's out in front of him. There is a, there's a foul for sure. But it's not as malicious as it looks because it's actually the follow through when he's coming down on the player that causes more contact. And just for a couple seconds there, we probably being read the riot act. Yep. you got to figure that his time is done. Alves needs to be a little careful. Maybe it's my basketball background. When he spiked the ball, I was yeah. like, you're going to get teed up? He's already on a yellow. 
He was uh, not too happy with the official. He made it pretty clear. Sean Masiunas on it. Nathan DeSantos, the two center backs. Lano's from a really high line right now on this right flank. Going after, or trying to at least. The rotation for Marshall has easy. Santana under pressure just had to get it out of Dodge. He turns it over. Jessica with his hands up going, what are you guys doing? Just knock this thing out. Diaz on the ball. First team All-American back to Schneider. There's a home team. Mm -hmm. About a six-hour drive from Marshall in Huntington, West Virginia, down here to Cary, North Carolina. Five hours, 45 minutes, but that fan base definitely spans across the state. And they're out here in full force, looking for history. Never has a Marshall program had this opportunity. Been in the College Cup and then in the final. Indiana has been here more than anybody. 16 finals appearances. Eight titles. Schneider using his body well, working off of Pizarra. Joseph now looking for the switch. Sozo was there, but he overhit him. Get some more substitutions here for Indiana. Nate Ward going to check back in for Wittenbrink. Freshman Ward. Let's see how much pressure now they apply on this left side of Marshall, switching Italy back over here, to be fair. Let's say the best we've seen out of him and the opportunities for Indiana moving forward were probably the beginning of the first half where he did start on this right-hand side. A lot of space we've alluded to the yellow card for Alves as well. And some people at home might think, so he's on a yellow card, so what? Take advantage of that. You know, force him into a decision with the speed, with the space. Run at it. Because even if he's willing to step up, that just means you're pulling the back line in another direction. And that's going to open up other opportunities. It then takes us back to our other point where no one else has really stepped up there. You know, Bezerra, after he was you know, the one-two with Enderley in the middle, there was a little bit of success. Yeah. You've got to find a way to get some is a National Player of the Year candidate. Yeah. In the sophomore, in the semifinal, he was pretty non-existent. This game has kind of been the same. Yes. Is it about Marshall? Is it about, w w why has he been less effective? Spatial recognition. Because it's there. He's just not taking advantage of it. Max Schneider sitting as the number six for Marshall isn't dropping down deep to help out a boatload. So he's got opportunities within the two center backs. They spread themselves very thin. Lino's playing really high on the right. We talked to Chris Grassi about that. You know, my question was a bit more about transitional movements, but what it does is it spreads this back and opens up space. Bezerra's got to step into it. Great job by Diaz to create space. They're going to play to the back. They did just that. Diaz is there. And the All-American pull a piece of brilliance. Oh, just wide. This team is determined to play out of the back, and it looked like they were in jail, but they found their way out. Just watch his decision here, though. They get in the way of each other, pump fakes a little bit, and then it's just waiting for someone else to step up, create something out of absolutely nothing. Roman Salentano, how's your heart rate? I mean, he has a sixth sense that this is wide. At least one of us does, because my heart was pounding on that ball. Yeah, I thought that was going to be on frame. Aaron Schneider going back and forth a bit. And Victor Bezerra, the National Player of the Year candidate, getting a talking to from Sorin Stoika. He should walk away because I thought he was going to get a card for this. Yeah. It's, it's a movement that could have easily been Marshall put down and go.
And Nate Ward, the freshman, just subbed on, pressuring a little bit. Masayunas, nice touch around the bend. Oh, good work by Sosa. Sosa plays it off. Alazolo for a corner. Seventh of the match. Ball played in quick. And Bezerra wants a foul, not going to get it. Slow to get up. Joseph Diaz combining, but Bezerra comes back to pick it off. Clever little touch over, and Masayunas comes in to break up any potential transition. defensively to force Marshall out of back. They've had to deal with their fair share of the press themselves. It's really the first time that we've seen the entire unit from the Hoosiers play that high of a line. Turn the ball over from what we have decided to call the home squad Marshall. You hear the fans getting in again. Here some We Are Marshall. Now Indiana's fans have turned out, but there's definitely more green than red here. And I think that's when it's, when you've never been here before, people want to see it. It's, Never happened in Marshall's history to be at this stage. Bezerra in a little pocket of space. Might fall to Bezerra, might dink it over. Well done by Masa Yunus. Told you his positional awareness, that's it right there. Yeah. That's the space that's there and all he has to do is pinch a little bit left, right, or step up just in front of this back line because the Hoosiers are doing a good enough job to create opportunities, but he's still got to step in, and he's got to be commanding. You know, at the end of their semifinal game, Todd Yagley was imploring him to get involved. He said, Victor, I need more energy. That's what he needs right now. There's 15 minutes to go in the national title game. How bad do you want this? Ryan Wittenbrink checked in for Nate Ward at the break there. Get a break in action. Big time NBA action coming your way Wednesday night, folks. The play-in tournament starts on Tuesday on TNT. The Wednesday, though, ESPN games are the games. You've got the 10 seed against the 9 seed, San Antonio against Memphis, 7.30 Eastern. And then the marquee game, the 7-8 game, Golden State taking on the Los Angeles Lakers. The winner of the 7-8 game gets that 7 seed. The loser has to play the winner of the 9-10 game to even get the 8 seed. Could we possibly see the Lakers not make the playoffs? Let's see if that's going to happen, but find out 10 o'clock. Eastern on ESPN on Wednesday. Still shoot the Jack? How's the how's the, the jump oh, shot? You sound like uh, yeah. you sound shoot like uh, Charlie Murphy. Yeah, shoot, sound, shoot, shoot like Prince. Shoot, shoot the J. Shoot it. Game. Uh, blouses. <laughs> I've laid up my my uh, my boots, if you will. Okay. Yeah, I'm retired fully. If you need me, let me know. Play a little two-man game. No, I'm up for that, it. That always ends poorly. Let me blows an Achilles or something. Here we go. <laughs> Diaz is going to try to get a foul. Doesn't get one. Yosef charging at the back line, trying to cut it in that right. It's where he wants to get to. Mooney, last ditch defending. Let's see if Celentano can save the corner, and he does. Celentano has the most saves he's had all year now. Six. It's his season high. The Indiana keeper. Indiana's mustered one shot in the second half. They had six in the first. Talked about their missed opportunities. They had a post, as did Marshall in the first half. But this second half, is it fair to say it's been all thundering herd? Yeah, for the most part. And it also gives you a much better idea defensively of how much work Indiana's having to do with Celentano making all those saves. Yeah. There is a, a tiny change over the past couple of minutes from the Hoosiers. They're doing a better job. Again, I'm talking the last couple of minutes, so easy at home. Of trying to 
pick out their moments with this base. That's what Todd Gagley said. He said, we understand that we're not going to get many. Well, spoiler, if you're just joining us, they've had a couple. Center back Daniel Muni an opportunity twice in the first half, once off the post. Maybe he gets forward, doesn't play it in, cuts back. He goes down, wants a foul, no call. Now the third step, first step forward. Got some options. Lionel's again the right back, charging down that right wing as he always does. Diaz, the All-American, has it in space. Nowhere to go, really. He's cramping. And he's stretching a little bit, yeah. There's a number of players who are starting to feel the effects as we're almost 80 minutes in. And Marshall's up one player, Joao Souza. 17 now playing on that far wing. Notice how much in their buildup they start to pivot more to the right side with John Eric Linos. Mm -hmm. you know, they basically removed all offensive capability from the likes of Alves at left back sitting on that card. Stay home, stay sound. Alves does travel forward now into the box. Here's Joseph trying to get that right foot. He tried to bend one in in the first half. It was just wide. We're not in the earlier this half. And Diaz has to go down. That's your difference maker. He created, helped create both the goals in the last two games that were game winning goals. Roberts was the beneficiary, Jamil Roberts. But Diaz was the man that provided the pass or the play to get there. He is their All-American leading goal scorer, 12 goals. Player of the year of the conference, midfielder of the year of the conference. And again, obviously, if this is still tied, we're going to overtime. Yeah. Uh, there'll be two you know, first goal wins, sudden victory. But it's a 10-minute overtime period. If there's no winner there, you go to a second overtime period. No winner there. We're going to penalty kicks, which is where we went for the women's game earlier today between Santa Clara and Florida State. Santa Clara was the beneficiary of them. 4-1. 17 times a national championship game has gone to overtime of the 64 College Cup finals that have been played. Seven of those went to penalties. Get down to the field. Lori Lindsay's got something on Indiana. What do you got, Lori? Well, they feel confident in where they are right now. They knew that Marshall is their combination play is second to none. But as long as they can keep tight between the lines and continue to spring those front runners for Indiana, they feel confident to be able to close out this game in regulation. We'll see if that comes to fruition. I mean, do you feel that that's an accurate assessment or that the, the Indiana team, you know, you're booing yourself with confidence. Do you, do you feel good if you're an Indiana fan right now, given what you've seen? I'm going to steal part of your verbiage you used in the first half, where if I was a betting man in Vegas who's putting odds down, I'm betting on the Hoosiers right now. Really? If, if it's in regulation, 11 minutes to go, and I had to pick one, I would bet Indiana. Just because they are so sound defensively, and though Marshall is still stepping on the ball a lot, these chances coming for Yosef, he's cutting inside 1v3. Yeah. Everybody from Indiana is stepping in. Conversely, you go the other way. There's some separation that's starting to be created here. You just have to be careful if you're Indiana on the transitional moments defensively. Keep that unit intact so when you do spring forward, you're not all spaced out. Okay, my man's putting shekels down on Indiana. It's good to know. We go to OT, we'll talk again. <laughs> just like the war of attrition that we talked about. Yeah. I gotta hedge my bets here. Oh, Malum Gumbale is getting into some space. He won that battle with Alves, but Schneider reads it so well, comes over and picks it off. Gumbale also was struggling earlier in the half, stretching out. He does not exactly look 100% as he gets up. Vinicius Fernandez checked in whenever Diaz went down. He laid it off to Dolabella, back to DeSantos. We're under 10 minutes to go. Nil-nil between Marshall and Indiana. Devin Kerr, myself, Dallin Cup, Lori Lindsay on the field. Long shot taken, I would say, hopeful at best from Roberts. Celentano clips it out to Gumbale. Heavy touch turnover. Oh. 
Snyder back off him. Ball popped up and hit Gumbali in the hand. They don't call a handball, and Endelie's almost loose. And that's Dos Santos over. You've got two of the four back four have yellows right now for the Thundering Herd, and it looks like it's about to be a third. This is really unfortunate for Marshall. The yellow card for sure, but on the other end of the field, the reason this opportunity was created was because of the no call. This ball that pops up off the pitch smacks him right in the hand. And then allows them to continue to progress the other direction. Right outside the top of the 18. Hands extended away from the body, trying to pick out Milo Yosef. Nathan Dos Santos, of course, on the back line, having to step in. You can't fault him. Well, Bezerra is standing over it. He'll take it back, short to Sesek. Bezerra goes into the vacant space up the wing. As Paul played in. Still loose. Knocked down and the lead, but they're going to call a foul prior to that. Semlin knocks it over to Alves. Joseph cutting in again, looking for Fernandez. Trying to slip through to Roberts. And Endeli. Great tackle by Schneider. Finds the feet of Schmidt. Out to Wittenberg. Trying to get end line. No ball played in. Headed down, Endeley. Looked like he was winding up for the ball. He didn't take it. Takes a touch and shoots it, and they'll go out for their second corner of the match. Indiana showing some little signs of life here. Communication coming down from the man himself, Yeager, having a conversation with Bezerra down at the corner before he whips this thing in. He wants to slow the game down. Understands that just precious moments at 7.01. The clock going here and allow his two big center backs to get up again. Very active, couple missed chances. Can they pick out another head? He comes short back to Bezerra, plays it in. Dangerous, but just slightly overhit as the runs were made to the near post. He went back post. It's obviously a lot of respect being paid by Marshall as well in terms of that quick counter option. They know that's what Indian is looking for. Yeah. And especially the fact that Ali Semla hasn't come very high. You know, they pretty much play him as a sweeper keeper, allowing him to get involved in distribution. They've kept him home a lot. Fernandez charging forward. Over to Yosef. Schneider in space. Can't get out on his feet. Out to Lajos. Flips it in. Roberts is there. Gets ahead to it. Out from Celitano, though. You know you're in, you know, the Triangle, North Carolina, when Grayson Allen is mentioned, <laughs> soccer game. <laughs> they love their hoops, and they love their soccer down here, folks. Uh, Roman gave a little wink, blink, and nod over his shoulder when he heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Vitor Diaz, the All-American for Marshall, went out holding his leg. We'll see if he comes back. Let's actually get down to the field and hear from Lord. Yeah, just talking to the Marshall bench and wondering where Diaz is. And he's just cramping right now, so to give him a little bit of rest, obviously less than five minutes to go in regulation to see if they can get him back in the game if this does go into overtime. He has been their guy all year long. 
their difference maker. See if he can get back in and do just that. But there's enough capable guys out here with, without him, to be very honest. Thunder Herd has a lot of options, as you mentioned in the first half. Then. Yeah, just a couple salt tablets and some water, and he'll get right back at it. Again, it is sort of lost in translation, the attack at times, without Diaz in it. They found a way in the semi. They found a way in the quarter. The final totally different experience. And I talked about at the top of this show the culture, the identities for both of these squads and how Marshall had asserted themselves. You know, you talked about the knocking down the, the giants of college soccer, yeah. if you will. Of course, Clemson, number one, re reigning champions, Georgetown in the quarterfinal. Six wins in the top 25 overall. It's different when you play a team like Indiana. You know, you come up against a team like Akron, like Indiana, Maryland. You're talking about hollow grounds of college soccer that it's just something else. And that's the comment that came out of Todd Yegley where he said, the jersey, that's the edge. That's why we win. A couple minutes to go in a game. You've got to stay grounded if you're Chris Grassi and Marshall if you want to find a way to break this deadlock because it's so difficult. That's when the giant starts to come into it. Bezerra having struggled, having problems with his leg as he's got the training staff out there now. So the two All-Americans right now are struggling. And you mentioned the, the jersey, the crest, the program. I mean, this is... This is the best tradition in college soccer. 21 college cups, that's the most. 16 finals appearances, that's the most. They've won eight national championships, only trailing St. Louis, who racked up a lot of those you know, before JFK was in office. So when you look at recent years, the Hoosiers have been where it's at with a number of other programs that Marshall has run through, and they've proven to themselves, as they told us, Devin, we want to put Marshall soccer on the map. And these are a lot of guys, again, they didn't know what Marshall was. You've got guys from Germany. Brazil, the UK, and some of those guys have started to hear about ACC programs and programs like the Indiana, programs like Stanford, but Marshall trying to put themselves on the map. Chris Crassi, Crassi has sold this program to guys. They've come here to do it. They put them on the map, but now this could be a whole different level if you can win the thing. We'll see if they can finish it off, though, because obviously Indiana's had a few more opportunities as of late. Diaz did come back in for Jamil Roberts. And Thomas Rohr came back in, nine in red for Victor Bezerra, who went out and is struggling. Mooney looking long for Gumbale. Semla. Off the line, corrals comfortably. Just over three minutes to go. As we're about to head into overtime, Marshall's gone 2-1-3 and three in overtime this year. Indiana 0-0-2, but those, both those full draws that went to penalties, they won. Penn State, they beat in the Big Ten Championship, and they beat St. Francis in their opening game here at the NCAA Tournament. And if we get to overtime, there'll be two 10-minute overtime periods or a goal that would end the game. Sudden victory where we go to overtime, over penalty kicks, excuse me, if there's no deadlock breaker through the first those 20 minutes. He is stepping forward. Sosa wants a foul, not going to get it. Salentano, nice distribution to War. He tried to flick it on. Falls to Endele. Endele, excuse me. Trying to split the defense, that did not come off. Almost a 1-2, but read well by Sesic. Oh, no. 
little lollipop pass. Bibi just gets it out. Over a minute to go. speed of Ryan Wittenbrink on the offensive side is the reason that they've kept him on, but defensively, he gets very lucky. Almost a catastrophic mistake on the back line by the youngster out on that wing. Hesitates for a second. That allows the play to develop to get through. Well, for the 18th time in men's college cup history, and the second time today, we're going to overtime. Chris Grassi and the Thundering Herd could not break the deadlock. So we've got 10 minutes will be on the clock when we come back. A goal will win it. A goal will hoist a trophy. A goal will crown a champion. We'll find out after this from Cary, North Carolina. Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina for the Men's College Cup Final. The national champion will be crowned here. The question is how? Will it be on a goal in overtime? or to penalty kicks. Alongside Devin Curra, I'm Dallin Cuff, the third member of our squad. The great Lori Lindsay is down on the field. So for the NCAA postseason, two 10-minute periods. First goal, sudden victory, if and when that happens. If there is no goal within those two 10-minute periods, we will go to penalty kicks. If you are subbed in the first, you can come back in the match in the second overtime. You cannot re-enter within that overtime period, though. Devin, if you are Todd Yegley, if you are Chris Grassi, what are you, your message, what are you communicating to your guys right now? Grassi's going to talk to his boys about going back to the reason they got here because they faded from that as the match went on. It doesn't matter how many touches you take on the ball. If you can't be inventive in the final third, it means nothing. They've had their fair share of issues in matches past, but Georgetown, Clemson, every single time they stepped on, they found a way. They have to alter their act moving forward again. If you're Indiana, the conversation will be, you know why you're here. You know why all of that work was put in. Everything, the off-season training sessions and everybody before you. And it won't it won't be don't let us down. It will be cement yourself in history and join some of the greats. That is well said, because when you're at Indiana, you're trying to take your place of what is an amazing trans transition, whereas the Marshall guys are trying to leave their mark, which has never been done before for this Marshall Thundering Herd program in men's college soccer. Soren Stoika, the official has the whistle in his mouth. And OT begins. Both these teams have played one OT match in this tournament. Indiana went to penalties against St. Francis in their first, their third round match, their first match of the NCAA tournament. Marshall went to penalties with Clemson, the number one overall seed in the Sweet 16. And they won that game in penalties as well, obviously. Or advanced, I should say, in penalties. Vitor Diaz on the ball. The All-American sat out a few minutes toward the end of the half, struggling a little bit with some cramps, as Lori told us, but he's back on the pitch, as is Victor Bezerra, who's struggling as well for Indiana, seven in red. They're both the All-Americans on these squads, but there's a lot of talent around them for sure. Now let's get back down to Lori has more on the Hoosiers. Yeah, speaking to the Hoosier bench, they're saying they're going to go more direct, look to see if they can still find Indeli up top, but pin Marshall in, see if they can pick some balls off and take their chances. Indeli is number 17 in red. He's been good in this game, their most dynamic player, but he's also been a game breaker at big times. He had the equalizer against Marquette when they came back from down a goal to win 2-1 earlier in the tournament. And he also had the game winner against Pitt in a 1-0 semifinal win and a great just individual moment of brilliance. And Malun Gumbale draws the foul by Milo Yosef. Very surprised with the exterior for Marshall as you get a good look at the challenge on Yosef that they haven't inverted themselves as much. You know, this is a team that prides itself on rotation. And the lack of presence up top has definitely been fixed from the semifinal to the final. But conversely, 
On the other side of things, Lionel's playing very high. We talked about Alves at the left back spot hasn't necessarily done that, but for a team that takes its interior midfielders, pushes to the wings, allows guys to cut inside from the outside midfielder spot, it's been much more direct in their buildup. Mm -hmm. You know, guys holding excuse me, traditional positions to try and challenge Indiana, and in order to break them down, you got to get outside of that. Mm -hmm. You know, go back to everything that got you here. And it is that beautiful build-up play. I said you coming in, technically, the way that they tactically move forward. Marshall, best team in the tournament. Yeah. Joseph rides a challenge from Sesek. Plays line host. Sosa trying to play it in, almost gets it to Roberts. He scored, and he's been their guy in the last two games in terms of putting the ball in the back of the net. He had the game winner against Georgetown 1-0, game winner against UNC 1-0 Ws in the Elite Eight in the semifinal. He just turns it over, pulls on Wittenbrink. And Bezerra is trying to try to take it quick and go for goal. But Serin Stoika will pull it back. Cheeky! Playing FIFA in the locker room before this game. I <laughs> like it. Good on him. There was a glitch in FIFA years back where you could take a kickoff and just kick it. And if you hit the goal, it would go in. I was pretty salty about that. But they fixed that probably five, six years ago. For those other 12-year-olds out there. 12-year-old adult men. And the league comes back from an offside position. Joseph turns into some trouble, turns it over. And the league skips back Mas Yunus. DeSantos trying to come over. He can burn, and DeSantos on a yellow gets there when he had to. Mendeley's trying to put this on his right foot, but it's a great job by the center back coming over. Doesn't allow. He knows the strong side. He's done his prep work. Leaving your feet is the scariest thing in transition right around the top of the 18 because you can run into the last man rule as well, the dog zone situation. Perfectly timed by Dos Santos. Wittenbrink's touch takes him into a foul. Just over five minutes to go in the first OT. And as we cross to 11.30 Eastern, alongside Devin Kerr, Lori Lindsay, the former women's national teamer on the field. I am Dallin Cuff. Marshall in Indiana playing for the national title on the men's side in overtime. We saw an overtime match in the women's match earlier today. Went to penalty. Santa Clara won 4-1 against Florida State. Their first title since 2004. A lot of great former Santa Clara players were there to support that team. Brandy Chastain, the great Allie Wagner. Leslie Osborne as well. Had a lot of fan support from former great players. Similar Indiana, same thing. Henley, Henley spins his defender. He's riding challenges. Skipping forward. Still loose. They don't clear it, and finally they do. Sesek out wide. Ball played in dangerous area. Dolabella got his head to it first, though. Indiana asking questions. Diaz on the ball. thousand tickets were available to be sold 5,000 were sold it is great to have fans back in this building it's given an atmosphere it's definitely added to the tension too because right now they're very quiet on both sides pass 
is short, and Bezerra's there. Semla was off his line. Bezerra goes down hard. Slipped. Joseph now again, wanted to cut in on that right foot like he always does. Laid off to Diaz. He'll take a shot, bounces back. Still Diaz! Shot! Digs through! It's hit across! And it's Roberts there again! Roberts does it again! Three straight games, and this one's the big one! He's given him the national championship! For the first time ever, the Thundering Herd are top of the heap! the senior has etched his name in Marshall history. The game winner against Georgetown in the lead eight. The game winner in the semifinal against UNC. And the game winner in the College Cup final. Amazing scenes as more people stream onto the field in green. And Chris Grassy, the Newcastle native, in his fourth year at the helm at Marshall, has taken them from a sub-500 team to the national championship. moments for players that you're going to want to forget in your career. It starts on Indiana's side. As you see Todd Yeagley comforting his players, BB did a great job. This actually starts with a turnover by Bezerra, and then Yosef goes to work. There's the inversion that I talked about, cutting in, challenging, deflection for sure, but watch the kiss of death off this post. Celentano asked so many questions within this match, answered every single one, and the one time that you want this deflection that's coughed up to go out over the end line. The woodwork says absolutely not. Jamil Roberts on the doorstep provides all the answers needed for Marshall to take down their first national title. Lady Luck can be so cruel and it happens twice. The deflection of Diaz, the touch off the post, tired legs, for one side, and an explosion by Roberts on the other. And Diaz was the guy again. It's the same combination, Devin. This is Diaz takes a shot here. He'll be credited with an assist, but he was the assist for Roberts in all those goals that were game winners as well. Looked at you in the eighth minute, and I said, they need to get back to what got them here. Couple minutes into overtime, They'd been so direct in their actions. I'm not talking about the play. I'm talking about the fact that no one was stepping in. The overlapping runs for the midfielders, the outside backs getting up high. None of that had taken full shape throughout this game until the game-winning goal. Milo Yosef picks it up. He struggled time and time again. But if you go back to the conversation in that quarterfinal match against Georgetown, we asked, were you concerned that he wasn't able to complete stuff? He said no, because he kept creating. It's the mindset. You kept going back to it. Yosef inverts, gets it to Diaz. You get, create an opportunity, and you let your All-American go to work. Roberts finishes it off. Chris Grassi, he wasn't arrogant, he was confident, he was very simply stated. When we talked to him about knocking off giants of college soccer, at that point it was before the Final Four, before the College Cup semifinal. He just said, we have the best team. We have the best team in this tournament. And we play our game, nobody is beating us. He was prescient. 